minutes, but uh, we are going to uh, start with our uh, with our conference uh, this morning. So, uh, Christian, if you take your seat as well. <laughs> okay. Um, so, welcome everybody. Uh, the second edition this year of the International Value Investing Conference. Uh, we are very happy to uh, see a lot of uh, familiar and new faces this year. So. Uh, Thank you for uh, supporting us again this year, even though value has not yet made its, uh, its comeback, but uh, perhaps we will, uh, we will see that uh, shortly. Uh, not for a lack of ideas today, I can assure you. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank our uh, sponsors, European Capital Partners, uh, VP Fund Solutions and Value Holdings, Gesellschaft, Axin Gesellschaft. Um, thank you for supporting, uh, supporting us. Uh, and also for th supporting the Against Malaria Foundation. Um, some notes beforehand, I would like to mention, you see a camera crew, uh, the speeches will be recorded and they will be made available publicly. Uh, we will send you an email after the conference. We will also send you the PDFs of the, uh, the presentations. So uh, no need to take pictures or start filming everything. Um, so uh, just so that you know. Um, and uh, if you could click to the next one, yes. Uh, I would like to tell you something briefly about our charitable benefactor last year again, and this year, uh, the Against Malaria Foundation. Um, if you would be interested in making a donation, uh, you can do so at againstmalaria.com slash IVIC, International Value Investing Conference. Um, for the Against Malaria Foundation, I would like Julian Austin to take the stage and uh, Tell us a bit more about the good work that he and his organization are doing. So, good morning, everybody. My name is Julian Austin, and I am the operations manager at the Against Malaria Foundation. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here, and thank you for uh, choosing us as the charity once again. And today, I'd like to talk to you uh, briefly about AMF as a charity, what we do, how we do it, and a focus on two words, impact and accountability. So malaria, the problem, we all know about it, we've all heard about it, but we maybe don't know the figures um, which are staggering. Every year, nearly half a million people are dying, uh, over 300 million are falling sick, and the majority of these are pregnant women and under fives. Um, it's clearly a health issue, but it's also an economic issue. Uh, when people are ill, they're not working, their country's productivity is really held back. And as we know so far, there is no vaccine to date. And I think it's a frighteningly big problem. It's maybe a little bit far away from our eyes, but this is essentially the equivalent of what's happening every day in terms of uh, deaths. And I think this sort of brings it home, it's a scary message. And the key thing here is that it's entirely preventable. So this is where we come in. Um, a big part of the solution, not the entire solution, but a big part of it is uh, bed nets. So long-lasting, insecticide-treated nets. Uh, they cost about $2 each. They last for three years. They're cheap, they're effective, they work. And the impact of that is that roughly Every 600 nets will save one life and, of course, uh, prevent many more from falling sick. I'd like to give a little example um, of an impact of one of our projects in the past. So uh, this is a graph of uh, malaria cases for a district in Malawi, in the Cheo district. You can see the months going along uh, the x-axis and the black line is prior to net distribution. So we can see a, a peak during the rainy season and then sort of uh, dropping. But if you just take a look at the, the numbers there on the y-axis, we're talking about tens of thousands of cases every month. So uh, if you were to make a, a dent in that 10% reduction, it's a major breakthrough. Um, and we distributed nets at the beginning of 2012 and we can see the green line shows the cases for the, foot, for the year after our distribution. We're talking about 30, 40, 50% reduction in cases. So that's an extraordinary uh, health improvement. 
I'd like to just take a moment to uh, touch upon how we began uh, as a charity. My colleague uh, Rob uh, began with uh, World Swim Against Malaria around 14 years ago, and he had the idea to get a million people uh, out around the world swimming on the same day, albeit with time zones, um, against, for the fight against malaria. He didn't manage to get uh, the one million, but he did manage to get 250,000 people swimming, one of whom was Michael Phelps. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I think it's indicative of our ethos as a charity. We are very grassroots and we have a real focus on participation from everybody. Uh, one net costs $2, so any donation is, you know, every net matters, every donation counts. And that's really been the sort of founding principle on which we've built AMF over the last 14 years. So what do we do? Simply put, we buy nets, we distribute them in country, uh, we avoid theft, and we ensure use. And this is done um, through in-country partners, and we have agreements that we put in place that ensure that the work is done in a transparent and accountable way. We are a very lean organization. At the moment, we are five full-time staff. And over the last three years, we've been generating close to $50 million um, in donations. And so we're very lean. And the way we can operate with such a small uh, team is by trying to leverage technology as much as possible and trying to automate things where we can. Um, we do. We have had a lot of very generous pro bono support from corporate partners, and we're very proud to say that you know, all of the people who have helped us uh, f from the beginning are still helping us today. Nobody has ever stepped away. And this uh, has allowed us to receive a lot of services, legal, audit, uh, banking, uh, for free. And this allows us to keep our central cost at around about 0.6%, so really, really lean, really low. Guiding principles, impact, accountability, transparency, efficiency. So impact, we talked about the nets, they're cheap, they're effective. Accountability, um, we ensure that the nets reach where they, they are meant to go and um, we monitor then the use afterwards. And I'll talk a bit more about accountability later. Transparency and efficiency. So if you or I were to go and make a donation today, um, we would ensure that 100% of that money was used to buy nets. And we would then send a link to show exactly, with the money that you gave, uh, how many nets were bought and where are they going to be distributed. And this is a, a really effective, uh, we found, for donor confidence. So accountability for us is, is really crucial. And I think I'm going to talk about it in two main areas. So to our donors, uh, as I was saying, 100% of the money goes to buy nets. We tell you exactly where, that, uh, where the, that money has gone and where the nets will be distributed. And we've seen that this has resulted in high donor confidence and repeat donations, which then in turn uh, you know, allows us to buy more nets. At the moment, there are huge funding gaps uh, in sub-Saharan Africa for nets. Um, so th it's just absolutely crucial. And then on the other side, we have our accountability from our in-country partners. And this is really important because we need to ensure that the nets that we're distributing get to the people that need them. And the way we do that is by having a focus on data. So we are asking for household level, for all the, net, uh, the households that receive our nets, we get household level information, we electronify it. And that does two things. It stamps out uh, inflation and theft. It makes it very hard to do that, at least. And it gives us electronic data that we can then analyze and use for data purposes uh, for a bunch of reasons. And we're also held to account by others. Um, so there's been a movement in effective altruism, which is looking at how to do the most good. So which charities are the most cost effective? So if I give a dollar, how much impact am I going to get? And um, there have been a few leading organizations with this. I think GiveWell, uh, based in the US, has done really extensive research into different charities and different programs. And we're very pleased and proud to say that we have been ranked uh, 
a top a top ranked charity uh, for the last six years, and we hope that it will uh, continue. So, um, a word on you. I'd like to come back to impact. So, last year, uh, from the conference, we raised, or you raised, I should say, nine thousand uh, dollars and euros. And with that money, as I said, 100% was used to buy nets. And that purchased around about 6,000 nets, which covered around about 10,000 people. And that's 20 entire villages covered uh, thanks to you. So a big thank you. And um, you can see here, this is a screenshot from our website. I don't know if you could make out that net, uh, the flag, sorry, which is... Um, Ghana and Malawi, and coincidentally, uh, the nets that you funded are being distributed uh, as we speak today in those two countries. So thank you very much. Um, a, a little word on our growth. We have two main sources of um, donations. The first are individual donors, people like uh, you and me, who give uh, five euros, a hundred dollars, 10 pounds. And they are really, I think, our lifeblood. I talked about us as a, a grassroots and participatory uh, charity. And we're very happy to see that that's been growing very steadily over, over time. Um, seems that donor confidence is high. And last year, we received nearly 100,000 uh, donations. And then the other group, uh, equally important, is uh, a small number of very large donors who never cease to um, amaze us with their generosity. And um, we've been very fortunate in the past to have had some you know, l single large donations. Um, and they have also been donations that have allowed us to cover different areas or so our central costs. Um, and that, that gives us the ability to say to uh, members of the public that when they donate, 100% of the money will go to buying nets. And so over time, uh, this is our uh, progress. Uh, so as I said, around about 50 million in revenue a year. Uh, you can see in uh, the last, this year we're at about, about uh, 35 million, uh, which is down from 49 to 47. But of the 49 to 47, there was a one-off 23 million and 15 million uh, donation, which went down to 2 million this year. So if we take off those big lumpy uh, donations, the Underlying growth is around about 20% per year. And our cumulative totals um, are now getting really quite staggering. So we've raised nearly 180 million over 13 years. And you know, when we spent that money, we'll be talking about around about 60,000 deaths averted and 60 million malaria cases averted. Um, and this growth has been really important for us. And these are some distributions that we've signed recently with countries. And as you look down the list, you'll see the percentage. And, and that percentage is important because with the increased funds that we've had over the, year, over the last uh, few years, it's allowed us to make significant contributions to a country's malaria ca uh, campaign. So we're talking about you know, up to 50% or even more than 50% of the nets for a whole country. And when we've got that sort of critical mass, it allows us to enter into agreements and bring more accountability measures that are harder to do when you're bringing a, small amount of, a smaller number of nets to bear. So this growth has been really important for us in terms of the kind of accountability measures, the data that we can ask for, and, and, and this is uh, only going in the right direction. So um, our, late, our last agreement that we have or just signing at the moment is for DRC, one of the poorest countries in the world and one of the most affected by malaria for um, about 12 million nets. Despite this growth, we still have demands from countries that far exceed the funds that we have in hand. So at the moment, we're allocating around about 50 million, and we have uh, requests from different countries in excess of 150 million. So uh, there is still a big need. I mean, there are gaps in funding all over um, sub-Saharan Africa. 
And a word about the future. Um, I think one thing that we see we're very excited about is the, the use of technology. Most of um, our distributions at the moment collect data on paper, and that paper is then sent to a centralized data center where we will type it up and put that in electronic form. But we see a real potential for the use of um, smartphones, electronic data collection. We can get things in real time. We can bring more um, transparency. Uh, we can have quicker access to the data to, to use it for decision makings during campaigns. And we've, it, you might think, you know, smartphones in, in DRC, it's you know, a, a crazy idea. And we've actually uh, trialed it in the past. And it, it's fantastic to see that even in the most challenging environments, um, we can bring technology to bear and have an impact. So this is uh, GPS coordinates of all the households in a, a region in, in DRC that we're receiving AMF nets. And finally, uh, it's not all doom and gloom. The numbers are, are frightening, but a note of optimism to end on. Um, so if we, if we sort of step back and take the 15, 20 year view, we have made immense progress in the in the last few years, so malaria deaths are down by 60%, and that's you know nearly 700 million cases prevented. And there are countries now that are going, um, you know, declaring themselves malaria-free. 13 countries uh, that had malaria in 2000 have had no cases in 2014. So we're getting there, um, but we're, the job is far from done. Uh, a child still dies from malaria every minute. In, in Africa, um, and we know how to prevent it. Uh, it's cheap, we can do it, we just need to get on with it. Thank you very much. <laughs>